Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, my thoughts and prayers, first of all, definitely go out to the Ukrainian people. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like. Uh, you know, I've had, I've had moments where there was an earthquake uh, and... Uh, I didn't know what was happening and the house was shaking or, or whatnot. And it, I mean, that was terrifying enough that I remember it months, years later after the fact. And I can't imagine what people are going through that have to live uh, with that. And I can't imagine, you know, you see a jet, you see planes going overhead and in our world in the united states in in most of europe you know those jets go overhead or there's a military parade or fourth of july independence day type thing and you see them go by you know and it's like wow look at that thing that's pretty loud you know it's pretty interesting and i can't imagine being on the receiving end of you see a little dot coming and all of a sudden just everything around you starts exploding and then you hear the bang of the plane going by because uh, it's going you know twice the speed of sound it's just uh 1.5 million ukrainians have already been displaced and uh what i wanted to talk about here is how and why this is going to impact the fish hobby and I decided to do this live rather than to do it um, in a pre-recorded format um, just in case anybody had any questions or thoughts or input and also I'm doing it at uh, 2.33 in the morning my time because well one I'm up usually but two because I wanted to basically see if anybody in Europe or uh, Asia, Russia, wherever, Ukraine. Uh, has any input or wants to put in their two cents, you know in when I look at my uh, Stats on the videos. I know that we have a number of uh, you know I have 50 subscribers that are uh, Ukrainian like 56 of them um, and uh, Quite a few Russians as well. So I want people to know that uh, I completely understand the difference between What a government does and what people do now also i know this can get uh politically touchy if we're going to discuss this stuff um and i want to talk more about the logistics the the shipping routes uh what shipping costs have done what is ground shipping looking like lately what is oil and gasoline going to do how much of the cost of that is related to the price of crude oil, you know, those kind of things. Um, so we're going to look at some of that economic stuff and it's not going to be a super, um, not for a super uh, fishy centric type thing because this could be any product. This could be any um, thing that's going up, but in our hobby, it's going to be worse, most likely, than uh, than the virus was. So you guys saw what that has done to our fish prices. And I fully anticipate uh, with the market forecasts and things that are coming up <clears throat> that that will continue. And, and not only that, we will soon start to just not see some of the species that we're accustomed to seeing uh, frequently. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it may be difficult. Now, at the same time, um, it's an opportunity to seize this. So what we're thinking about, uh, if you were trying to, make the most out of this and maybe even get through these tough times by raising fish. Uh, I mean, I do this, um, myself. Uh, so, you know, what, what are the fish that I'm going to be looking at? I'll go over that first. So 
so we can stay on topic with fish because you guys uh you know that we're going to be paying more at the pump i mean in in seattle gas gasoline or petrol has gone from four dollars and 99 cents for the last few months up to five dollars and sixty cents five dollars and 49 cents uh somewhere in there in less than three days so what's that about well that is speculation that is the oil companies at a local level uh saying we think there might be an increase uh we're gonna raise our rates and therefore gas station attendants and and uh, or owners rather then they see that and they say okay well there might be a lag time and we might not have the rates figured out in time so let's let's just to be safe let's uh, let's up the price uh, in case we're selling new the the new stuff out of the tank and um, we're already low on the old stuff because a lot of times the old stuff will sell out quicker once the news is out that things are gonna get expensive and uh, yeah so uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us there's actually quite a few of you in here I'm gonna say hello really quick as well to to those of you I see uh, the Scouse Scaper, what's up? Uh, Chris Robertson's, what is going on? Got your membership back. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate those memberships. Makes a big difference. Uh, you know, a buck ninety nine is still pretty affordable. I think not even half a, a gallon of gas uh, for behind the scenes uh, looks at the channel, more input on what we're doing with the channel, and also all my sources and citations. For any of my research, any of my notes that I have, uh, all that gets uploaded to the community tab for members. So uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Sweet Shot, uh, Craig uh, Doniger, what's up? Uh, only Oscars, hey. And we've got Jonathan. And uh, let's see here. Aqua Balls, what's up, George? Alishon and... Uh, Belfagor, uh, welcome. So, uh, yeah, so uh, Alishan had commented that his local uh, fish store owner friend uh, had mentioned that a single box from Taiwan right now from a trans shipper costs around $500. And that doesn't surprise me. I mean, um, usually you order things by the box or case when you're when you're buying fish so what kind of fish first of all and then i've got all sorts of graphs and charts that we'll go over for for those of y'all who are wanting to take a deeper dive but what kind of fish do we want to uh think about and really the answer is going to be uh two types and uh <laughs> bipolar aquatics what's going on now i see you um Two kinds, and Stephanie, welcome also. Uh, you know, and Degenerate Fish Keeper, what's going on, Jason? Welcome, welcome, my friend. I wish I had some sort of a musical intro for you uh, to the chat. Uh, it is an odd time to stream, but it's an important issue. Uh, I'm awake, and uh, back was hurting. I'm awake at night a lot anyways, and I figured a lot of our European slash... Um, early risers on the East Coast, but a lot of our European and uh, Asian viewers, which is 40% of my channel, uh, will be around to watch this or uh, watch when it finally uploads to. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of it uh, because people will watch the replay. And welcome to those of you watching this in the future. How is time travel? Uh, so basically I would say what I said in February before the viral outbreak that we had going on, which was raise the bread and butter fish. So neon tetras, um, cardinal tetras, uh, you know, Corydora, plecos, things like that. Um, they're good bets anyways to raise usually, but I mean, in Seattle, uh, I've seen a, a price change of around two to three times increase in prices in the last two years. Scarlet Battis, for instance, which are usually wild caught now, uh, and uh, pea puffers, for instance, 
those have gone from around three or four dollars, uh, like three ninety nine or four ninety nine each, up into the uh, nine ninety nine to eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine range uh, at stores. So, um, and same with like yeah, Celestial Pearl Daniels. Uh, shrimp will probably follow shortly thereafter. Uh, right now, shrimp are still being brought in, in in massive numbers and there's a lag time there's there's a, a, a slowing and a disconnect always when there's world events and a big old uh you know increase in the cost of fuel but it's not just the increase in the cost of fuel that's going to happen here what's going on right now so well we'll just i'll describe what's why what all is at play and what to keep an eye out for in the near future, which will signal things are either getting worse or better or might stay the same as far as, you know, if, if what happens and what un unfolds. Uh, for sure, welcome also. And uh, Sandy, welcome. Uh, good to see everybody uh, rolling in, even at this strange time for a stream. So the other thing that I, I want to you know, encourage people to breed obviously, um, cichlids and, and like dwarf cichlids, cribs, um, you know, you don't need to breed whole boatloads of them because it's hard to offload, you know, batch after batch in your area. Now, if you're selling online, then that's a little bit different, but, um, the, the they're a good bet. And when they can't just get them cheaply from distributors, uh, then they're interesting um, fish to keep. Bettas are another one. They're one that people take for granted. All the fish that you take for granted and assume like, okay, that's going to be at Petco or PetSmart. Those fish are actually probably pretty good fish to breed. Now, there's some that are such an inexpensive fish and they're sourced in South America, where in America, that shouldn't affect I mean, those prices will go up with shipping costs and things, but it's not going to be as drastic as the Asian sourced fish, uh, which is the vast majority of fish, uh, which actually uh, fish make uh, a very crazy trip, um, usually in the United States. So they will go depending on the trans shipper and if you know a local importer or whatnot you have your exceptions people like redfish bluefish uh shop like jason my friend who uh will fly fish from you know germany uh the czech republic uh hungary poland he'll get really good quality european fish sent straight to seattle and he'll pick them up personally but the majority of local fish stores and definitely of chain pet stores and fish stores, they're going to be buying from big wholesalers like um, uh, Imperial, 5D, uh, Seagrest is a major one. And as well as some, uh, some other places, Cichlid Exchange and things like that. But they come in and they're either farmed in Florida or they are collected from wherever they are in the world. And then oftentimes they're farm raised or even just kind of centralized, condensed in Singapore, Indonesia, um, sometimes in you know Malaysia, sometimes in Taiwan, sometimes in uh, Hong Kong, Japan. It just depends on the fish. But a lot of this is all done in either Thailand, Singapore, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Sri Lanka is another one. And then they go from Sri Lanka, from, from the wild or farmers, to uh, Sri Lanka or Bangkok or Singapore or wherever, uh, Taipei. And then they fly all the way across the world to Florida, which is on the opposite coast from Asia, obviously. And then they distribute them back across the, the, the U.S. Then they'll get to a local distributor sometimes or they'll get to a local shop. And that means that they have several flights. Now, I want to bring up some stuff to show you guys uh, that was the most striking stuff to me, just, just to show you guys what's going on. And also, welcome to our viewers from uh, over in Europe. I'm so glad, like, Lauren... Uh, 
Lorna, um, so glad that you could be here. Uh, and uh, also, um, uh, Christian uh, Adolfsson, uh, also great to see you from Sweden. Uh, Terry, good morning. Uh, Diecast Truck World, welcome. Uh, Sweet Shot, welcome. Uh, so, let me, um, let's see here. So, let me pull this up. All right. Share screen. All right. <clears throat> so, the first thing I want to show you guys is, uh, Whoa, oh, come on. Why are these things not all loading? Are they just going to take a sec? Well, I'll download them all into a folder and then figure it out from there. Pardon, guys. Okay. Um, I think this is... No. Uh... It's weird that it, it uh, uploaded them all out of order, but we'll get there, I promise. And so I had an image of the flights right now. So there's a no-fly zone. This isn't actually um, – this is, is from about a week ago. But things are getting worse uh, because – uh, whether you're, you know, for it or against it or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the West is sending in shoulder fired, uh, surface fired, uh, javelins and, and other, um, SAM type systems that are able to take down airliners. And as we've seen, uh, when Russia, uh, or Russian backed troops, whatever, shot down that airliner a few years ago, people don't want to go uh, travel over areas that they could get shot down. Now, on top of this, Moscow, not that a ton of fish come out of Russia, but what has happened is the rest of Europe has said, Moscow, you can't fly over our, our, air, our airspace. And you can see here, there's a lot of flights all over the place. Now, they say you can't fly over our airspace, and, uh, you know, that, oh, man, where is the picture that I was looking for? Um, hold on, guys, one sec. Let me, let me send this to myself, because I want to show you what it looks like before. Um, so, the... Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. All right. I've, I've, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got it coming. So, Wait for that inbox number to turn to 37. Okay, so 37. So I want to show you this map, first of all, to just um, maybe have it sink home or set in how things are changing. And then I want to explain something to you guys about air travel. So right here is a map of, this was uh, around the holiday season, and 15,523 flights were around flying all over the world. And now these are inter... inter uh, intercontinental and international flights. Uh, this isn't necessarily counting little teeny Cessnas and stuff like that. Uh, 
but this is all the airlines and all the shipping companies. Um, oh, weird. Hold on. Why is... Um, okay, I guess it's just lagging behind. I, I'm sorry, guys. I was a little behind on the live stream uh, look, looking at it. Okay. All right. It makes sense. So you can see here, it kind of cuts off, but right up here, there's actually a route and you know, the world is not flat, obviously. So if this wraps around, there's a route and you can see the planes going North on this little thing here on this, uh, graph because that's not very good quality, but right up in here and up through here, and again, up over here, planes sometimes take the Arctic route. And the polar route is a lot shorter. So rather than going from, say, Seattle right here to Germany and drawing a straight line that way, it's actually quicker to fly over uh, the northern latitudes. Now, because of that, there are all these islands and things that are Russian. And because we've said Russian planes uh, can't fly any in any airspace of pretty much every country other than, I think, China, India, Belarus, um, and Syria are the exceptions right now. Uh, so they can have a nice little trip going in a, in a sideways V pattern, I guess, uh, Pakistan as well. Uh, so they now though, it's going to reroute flights is one major thing. Now the lack of Russian flights coming out and coming into cities, that won't probably be a huge impact because we're going to have, uh, flights that would be going in there and coming out of there. And it kind of should equal out as a wash, but these flights, you can see the flight paths that are going all over the place. Um, it will be impacted by not being able to go straight across here. So, for instance, ADA tissue cultures all come out of India. And uh, instead of going straight up and over into Europe uh, or over these water channels here, they're going to have to take these water channel routes. So this is before, and you can see how busy it is worldwide. You can see how densely packed Europe is. And this is, you can see here, this part here, that's Ukraine uh, when the conflict was going uh, just this last uh, holiday season. Planes were being kind of uh, careful and avoiding Donbass and uh, the 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 Crimean region just because of the ongoing war since 2014 that was going on there. So, I mean, there's, there's that, but if we then look at these, Oh, now they all load. Great. Uh, now if we look at, uh, a map closer and this was taken earlier today, this is, a big area. I mean, this is the size of, uh, this is England over here and we're all the way to Eastern border of Germany and, and then Bel Belarus here. So from that far, I mean, all of France, Spain, Belgium, Netherlands, all this area, an area the size of basically Western Europe, they can't fly over. So planes are going to have to go around. Well, what that means is congestion. And that's not good, obviously. Now, on top of that, we all know that the fuel prices are going wild. So let's look at a couple other graphs. This is just another uh, another farther zoomed out thing. But you can see how hectic the plane traffic is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just lost my flat earth base, didn't I? Uh, Alec the Nice, uh, welcome. Uh so let's see here. Uh, so the next thing that's going to be really uh, expensive is just think about people going out and collecting fish. They need to get gasoline for their motors. They need to get gasoline for their um, whatever it is that they do, you know, um, for hiking around and 
and uh, maybe it's a generator they have that keeps uh, pumps and ponds in in good working shape. Uh, maybe it's uh, to run electricity when they're not not near another place um, with the grid. And that's all going to skyrocket with everything else. Now, let me share uh, a different thing with you guys real quick. So, um, all right. So I have linked this article also. But uh, if this is just funny. Um, people are likely to see $5 a gallon. It's been $5 a gallon in Seattle for quite some time. Um, so that's just kind of laughable to me right now the average is four dollars and uh four four dollars and 19.6 cents the record before in the u.s was three cents higher uh we were three cents higher than that record previously which was in 2008 now if we look at how these surges work right now oil just hit hundred and thirty dollars a barrel on Tuesday um, which is yeah now and or well yesterday I suppose uh, but now Biden is announcing that we are cutting off Russia from we're not gonna buy their oil anymore now depending on who you ask 3% or 8%. I've seen both figures kicked around. 8% seems to be more accurate of the crude that we buy from them uh, as that makes up the American uh, chunk of oil. Now, a lot of other countries such as Germany, where they have um, only coal fi fired uh, and atom old aging um, atomic uh, you know, nuclear power plants, uh, running things and they have some dams and things obviously too but um they buy a ton of natural gas and oil and they have built two pipelines that enter through poland and into germany well it turns out that the first thing we did when russia attacked um is we said okay sanctions and we took all the billionaires wealth and we said uh it's locked up you can't use it and that's the standard uh move that we try to do russia is ruled by an oligarchy or rather uh, a small group of people and a lot of people think of it as putin telling these rich people what to do and them kind of supporting him and him giving them crooked deals and favors it doesn't really work like that honestly the way it works is those people also get a say in what Putin's doing. If they didn't give their blessing, these seven to 12 billionaires and military members under Putin, uh, it doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, also, Intel has come out that Putin told China before this happened, and he wanted to do it during the Olympics, and China told him to wait. So he's also been planning this for a long time, uh clearly and um when we when we cracked down and said bad and slapped him on the hand we did that now the step that has never been taken is we took them off the swift which is a currency exchange um that is kind of um even during world war ii you know switzerland stayed neutral supposedly and but they dealt with Nazi gold and they, they, they kept that they kept um, deeds to land and they kept artwork and other precious metals. Well, now you've got the SWIFT system, which changes it's a currency exchange and that's the acronym SWIFT. Now we've actually cut Russia out from that. So Russia cannot convert its, rubles into euros or into anything so the way they're planning to get around that is by selling their oil still and by selling to the countries that aren't in the blockade of their economy now in one week when we shut them off from swift their economy as a whole so they're they're in 
entire GDP on paper dropped thirty one percent in a in less than a week. Uh, right now, their stock market is closed. You cannot buy and sell uh, stocks in Russia. Um, I mean, they're clamped down. Uh, it's it's bad. It's going to literally make food uh, unaffordable for the poorest people in Russia. Uh, the billionaires obviously will probably be fine. They have money stashed places. But we did see in some cases like $40 billion, you know, over $683 billion of private individuals' assets were frozen. And uh, so what it, What was their plan? Well, their plan uh, was to go to the crypto market, uh, to go to Bitcoin and other things, Ethereum and all those sort of things. Well, now, as of today, we're announcing that there will be regulation of that market internationally. Uh, and they're announcing also that there will be the crude oil, which a lot of people think, okay, so we have a this blockade, the, these these um, embargoes, and we're not buying anything from Russia. Well, actually, we're not buying anything other than their oil. So it's just kind of funny because uh, actually what's important to us is the oil. So we can't, we won't support you in any way. You're a horrible war criminal. Hey, but can we still buy your oil? Well, as of today, the Biden administration says, actually, you know what? We're not going to buy any more oil. And what that has done is that has sent the already climbing $130 a barrel oil price rising, rising, rising. Now, at 130 th this is a great little article here because it says, um, and, and we're talking about so if you think about it on a fish, when you get a fish at the store, you are going to pay bare minimum when you got the cost wholesale of fish, plus the shipping, plus the packaging, plus however many died if they don't get reimbursed or whatnot, and you got that price. Now they're going to triple that price, and that's just to keep the lights on and to keep things going in a store. Tripling is the minimum. A lot of shops will, you know, quadruple or even five times it with a lot of fish. Um, <clears throat> so when calculating those prices, oil prices um, right now, uh, the crude oil price. So when you see that the the cost per per barrel, which is a fifty gallon drum, those big uh, black or blue oil drums you, you think of it cartoon oil drums 50 and 100 you know gallon barrels but in any case most of them hold actually 42 gallons uh, it's not really 50 or 100 and the the set international amount is going to be uh, that 42 gallon number so between 50 and 70 percent of the price of gasoline is based on whatever that stock that that crude price is so uh, that means uh, a gallon of gas made from 130 dollar uh, barrel of oil will have a raw material cost of three dollars and nine cents a gallon but that's just the beginning refining transportation and taxes all have to be added before the gas is sold. Um, and then there's other things like OPEC and what they decide to do, the oil producing uh, nations of the world. But using a conservative estimate, 70% for raw material costs, the price of oil being traded this week will result in a $4.41 at the pump in the coming days. Now that's assuming that it's already at $4. That's with $130 uh, uh, for 42 gallons or for a, a barrel of oil. Well, right now, analysts um, at the big firms uh, that, are, that do this for a living to make money for hedge funds, uh, they're projecting uh, that it could hit $200 a barrel. 
uh, which would mean that our average gas price in the U.S. would raise to $5.84 a gallon. Now, a lot of nations pay more than pay that much or more. Like, for instance, Turkey pays like it's something like $12 a gallon when you break it down. They do it by liters, obviously. Um, but it just depends on their tax structure, their infrastructure of how many refineries they have, how quickly they can retool. And people might think that we would release the strategic reserve to try to ease that 8% of, of our oil um, source in the U.S., but that's not going to happen. We are facing tensions with China and and their grasp over Taiwan, uh, or as they call it, uh, China. <laughs> they call it uh, just part of China. Uh, and also, you know, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Belarus, Moldova, um, any of the former Soviet satellite states, there could be war. Uh, Moldova probably being the most likely next if you were to look at that. Um, but I just, th this article breaks that down well. So you can see that it's not just the, the cost per barrel. And it, it tells you why the prediction of $5.84 a gallon is going to be uh, most likely what we see within a few weeks here. Uh, so prepare your life accordingly. All right, so let me get out of that. And let's let's hop back on to this other thing, um, and I'll also take a look at the comments in a moment. Sorry, guys. Um, all right. Okay. So now the other things that um, I wanted to show you guys are um, that. That swift thing that crippled the economy in uh, in Russia, but now on top of the crude oil and everything, Visa, Mastercard, and PayPal have all pulled out of Russia, and uh, now it's people think that there's going to be uh, all these billions being leaned into crypto. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just an excerpt from a Forbes article, which I've linked, um, that says a bigger earthquake than the SWIFT ban is awaiting uh, for when they uh, restrict, basically, or oversee um, that exchange. So, you know, if they already have crypto, then the Russian government might be in the clear but if they haven't already put that money into crypto th they have to find an exchanger and no one will do that for them right now maybe china or someone might be able to kind of launder it for them but that's where we're going to get them now while investors are not expecting also uh any more uh inflationary uh spikes in 2022 or 2023 the federal market uh, deems that they should rise faster than expected um, the inflation rate, basically, and the interest rate, and uh, it would be bad for stocks. So what have stocks been doing? Well, when you look at the stock market, I've got uh, graphs here of various, uh, you know, here we've got the Dow Industrial. And this right here, um, if, if I point this out, this is... 2020, 2021, 2000. This is the start of the new year right here. And then you get this huge crash that we had, uh, dip, and then, and then it rose again. Well, now with this other news in the last few weeks, now it's dipping again. But we are up in the 3, 36,000 range, uh, or were, <laughs> Uh, with the Dow Industrial, which is extreme. I mean, 20,000 used to be the, the, the ceiling just not even 10 years ago. Uh, and basically after Trump got in or right before Trump got in, those uh, old ways started to um, fall apart 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jonathan, thank you so much, buddy, for the uh, super chat. Invest in solar panels if you're home, if you're a homeowner. Regular electric net is powered by natural gas or oil. Um, yeah, a lot of it is. In the U.S., um, we have a lot of hydroelectric. Like where I'm at, it's hydroelectric, luckily. But a lot of the country, it's either coal or natural gas or um, a, a whole number of things. So, yes. Um, there's some issues with solar power just because of um, how inefficiently we have anticipated uh, the introduction and incorporation of it into the grid uh, around here in the United States. But um, nevertheless, I mean, yes, it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. If not, uh, if not financially, at least it's a good step, uh, you know, ethically. You know what? I just cut myself with what even is the, oh, great. It's a freaking piece of lead from the, a tie from around the bottom of fish thing. Okay, so the NASDAQ, same deal, boom, dropped when the war thing was announced. Uh, oh, no, we don't need the flight thing again. Boom, again, uh, S&P 500, so the top 500 companies in America, which happen to be some of the top in the world. Uh, what America's stock market does, the rest of the world tends to kind of do too. Well, let's say that, that Russia even goes to Bitcoin or to something like that. What's it done in the last six months? Well, check out how high it was. It was 60 bucks for Ethereum per, you know, each Ethereum was 60 US dollars. Now it's down to 28. So it's it's gone very low. Uh, what's uh, Dogecoin, just to joke around, you know, Elon Musk's silly uh, nonsense that shenanigans. It's only 12 cents uh, and uh, <laughs> from 30 cents, it's it's down to 12 cents. Uh, what is the most important one, Bitcoin, doing? So f it, it, it is at 42,000 US dollars per Bitcoin. Unlike in November when it was 60,000 or 65,000 almost. Um, so even if Russia can do this, they're losing money laundering it that way. And that's assuming that they've already got it in that way. It, so basically what I'm saying is we're in for a wild ride uh, just by looking at these trends. Now, what's more important and what's more relevant is uh, is stuff like this. So what I wanted to show you guys most is this. This is the cost of air freight right now up till, and this was up until we actually saw 2022. This, this goes up to the end of 2021. Look at how much money, this is dollars per kilogram, and we're up to $14 per kilogram uh, with Shanghai Air uh, to North America. Down here, we've got Frankfurt to North America. Remember, I said that, good, that, that's great. It's, that's Germany. It's only six, six, uh, six dollars for a kilogram. Well, remember this flight map? Germany can't fly over Russia and come straight to, you know, LA and other places anymore. They have to go the long route. So they have to use more fuel. So that rate already went up 40%. I checked it before this stream. That's what it is for today. Up 40% from that. So it is at, um, let me get out of this again. Uh, so this is up from six and it is all the way at nine or like eight eight fifty right now um so pretty crazy um this is all gonna get worse uh obviously with the fuel costs increasing so uh, assuming that all this is is also um you know, because of these costs, if, if gas goes up, it's going to go up 
for the boats that collect the fish. It's going to go up for the gasoline that is used to power, especially in developing nations, the electrical grid or, um, you know, to, to go to the store, to buy the fish food, to use the tractor, to pull the nets off the big things, uh, to make the boxes and the styrofoam that gets put in, the, the fish get put into, all of it. I mean, just assume that it's going to take a hit. Now, it should scale and drop off, but one of the most sinister and messed up things that I've seen in decades going on was that if you look up, Google it yourself for your own country, because there's a lot of different charts you can find, but look up your profit margin or basically your margin costs averaged out for corporations in your country for the last three years and look at their operational costs or their net costs and you'll find that somewhere the cost of materials of fuel of all those things goods have gone up inflation all that has caused on average seven to nine percent cost of goods whether you're talking potatoes or uh tomatoes or uh uh uh, turkey basters made out of plastic uh, from China or, or clothes or whatever, electronics. Now, because of that, you would think, all right, so maybe uh, the cost should go up that much. No, the cost has gone up, up to 28% higher. So what does that mean? That means that the corporations have said, oh, costs are going up. And they have actually, when you look at their margins, they've just said that. Does that surprise any of you? It really shouldn't. If you live in our common world, uh, it shouldn't surprise you. Uh, but it is just insane. So the six, hey, welcome, Jason. I was just talking about you. Um, so this is the uh, shipping uh, shipping uh, companies stocks uh, in the last bit. I mean, they're just going up, up, up. And then you can see uh, what happens up here. Boom, take a dive. Uh, so as I was saying, Jason, he is in Seattle, Washington. Uh, and let's, do we have that world map? So Seattle, Washington, in theory, would be like all the way over here, but off, almost off the screen. Well, it is off the screen. And the planes go up this way, and they take an arc over the Arctic. Well, now, because of the Russian islands and airspace, they can't do that, um, or the Czech or the Hungarian or whatever country he's ordering fish from. Not to mention that things are just all going to be screwed up because of this rerouting. And not to mention that we will have inevitable shortages because whenever you have a supply chain and you are down on it, you know, supply and demand, it, it, if you don't have enough of the oil or the jet fuel, the crude, then you're going to have problems uh, and, and the price is going to go up as demand goes up. So now this is another, you know, this is the one that we were looking at which was out of Hong Kong, but this was out of Germany. Remember that green line, the, the cheap one, quote unquote, was $6 per kilogram at the end of 2021. So the end of December. Um, and this is right here, this spike that went up. This is on, um, well, this is first COVID. And this is Omicron, Omicron right here. Uh, and well, and then this is the other spikes. You can see the spikes in it there, but the Russian thing, uh, if you continue this map, which I couldn't get the graph because the scales, the keys on the graph are either three months, six months or a year. And so it, it, uh, it looked funky like these, um, where it gives you a small compressed one, or you only get to see the year so far. And so, uh, I didn't cut and paste that together for you you guys but 
Um, here we've got also just to show you the inflation rate and it's it's doing its thing it's increasing it spiked way up for a while there um and this is a timeline of from 1950 all the way to 2000 it, it's a every five years is where these increments on the bottom are and then these percentages let's see if we can uh see it better guys um yeah whoa that might be a little too close but so when you look at inflation <clears throat> consumer goods like i was just talking about volatile uh food and energy they remove that from the overall predictions because like i said they jack the price up on everything on us so back here's 1960 uh right where this big old hike is this is the oil crisis that happened in the mid 70s and then again uh the the second oil uh crisis and it turned into home loans and all sorts of things the interest rate developing now i had another graph of bonds being bought and sold and all of it echoes these things they're all tied together and uh when you look at something like down here 2020 2021 2022 that's us here it's starting to go up and starting to go up again uh quickly now it's nowhere near historical levels but it's something to watch and it's if even if it isn't what costs the money when we see things like visa mastercard paypal not working in russia they're trying to go to crypto then they get bumped out of crypto when we see all that kind of stuff, we're going to see um, some some shenanigans. Now, as we saw all through the virus, this was shipping costs going up. So this was, um, uh, I think, this was the dry uh, the the uh, amount of money per shipping container, like six thousand um, dollars, and I don't remember what the set distance was but it was like uh you know a thousand kilometers or something uh but it we actually went way down after um after uh like september ish like pre-holidays shipping costs went way up when there was a backlog and everyone was like no one's gonna get anything in time for christmas and stuff and then demand dropped because of christmas and so costs drop too uh after christmas ends and this just lags or, or actually it's a shadow kind of uh so now it's inching back up so this will be something to watch you're gonna want to watch dry the baltic dry index of shipping costs we did lose 50 percent of that cost since october but even just when I checked earlier today, we're already back up to like 4,200. We're already back up here this quickly. It's like a straight line on the graph when you graph it out. So there's a lot of different things at play. And obviously, um, none of them make things easy. But the other thing I want you guys to remember is that these are real people's lives. For as bad as this is here... It's going to be extremely bad in Russia, not to mention Ukraine too. I mean, they're going to they're going to have uh, extremely detrimental, uh, you know, lack of all sorts of things, anything they need. Um, also, let me see if I can transfer this over onto here hold on let me pop this up um actually we'll open this too so that we have it ready all right so when you go to air cargo news and air cargo news.net <clears throat> Then you can also see uh, flowers, fish, seafood, vegetables, 
chargeable weight, yield rate, uh, and this is year-on-year -year charge per product category, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, and this is how much they've gone up each year. And some things have gone down, obviously. Um, but, again, you can see, too, when, when the virus hit and then when Omicron. Uh, so, it's not like these things that happen in our society don't have an impact. And the amount we're talking about in change here per pound, when you ship fish, there's lots of water. And we're talking about a jump that went from over down in here where we were used to this kind of territory, uh, 2018, 19, all through there. We were down maybe at three bucks. Uh, that's if you're going from Asia Pacific to North America. But uh, North America to Europe, you know, we're down to a dollar. Uh, a dollar per, uh, what is this, per kilogram? And so now that skyrockets up to eight, nine, and we saw up to 14 on that other chart. So um, these links, you guys can feel free to, to read through them. I did put them in the uh in the uh information uh description and again let's talk about at the end here i'll read some comments and we're going to talk about what fish we should look at breeding to do this but um again just some for for reference points uh there's all this information about why that spike happened, um, why there's congestion at the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal, how one little thing going wrong in any one of those choke points could really cause uh, some, some major problems. Uh, so that's the other thing, is we have to worry about what Egypt's doing. We have to worry about what Panama is doing. Right now, America is trying to friendly up to Venezuela, and coincidentally, they have, well, one, quite a bit of oil, but two, um, you know, they're down there kind of near the Panama Canal. Hmm, interesting, huh? Um, so this is another link if you guys are interested, but it's got um, shipping container, again, information of how Prices were rising all through 2021. Here's the start of 2022. Um, and you can read it, I think, like three times before they put up a paywall. Um, so just so you know, that's American Shipper. But um, it's just a wild, wild world, guys. So, you know, there is... That's the, um, yeah, and fish go air freight usually. Now, ground freight is also going to be extremely expensive too. So everything's going up. And if you're used to three bucks a gallon, you're going to see six. In, here in Seattle, we're probably going to hit eight bucks a gallon. Those are the, those are the uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if it went all the way to 10. Um, if you live right where the fish are being bred or spawned uh, on farms and things, you may not see a huge change. But yet again, if they're those cheap fish that everybody's accustomed to paying, uh, oh, I, a Neon Tetra, I will only pay a $2.99 max for a Neon Tetra or a Cardinal Tetra, maybe $4.99 max. And already we're like, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. There's no way they're going to import those things, your local fish store, when their wholesale cost says three or four dollars already when you look at the wholesale sheets it's insane it's gone so high um so i just wanted to point that out that those are the fish uh that we should be focusing on right um you want to make sure that you're breeding those fish that are kind of on the border of being cheapo fish, but they're easy to breed. And then you can, I mean, but, but like discus right now might not be the best time to be breeding discus. Um, although they are a heavy fish. So at the same time, 
you could hedge your bets and say that maybe discus won't be being imported because costs will be too high. The other thing you have to remember is that when oil goes up, everything goes up. So oil goes up 30%, food could go up, up to 30%. Now, arguably, it should be scaled. So food, if oil goes up 30%, say you are you have a truck and you need to uh, spend 100 bucks to get to the market. If the price doubles and you have to spend 200 bucks to get to the market, but you were selling 100 loaves of bread for $3 before, that doesn't mean you need $600 now uh, to cover your bases. But what the newest studies are finding is that corporations are making bigger profit margins than they ever have before. Again, CEOs are getting paid higher than they've ever been paid before. This is not just a fish problem. This is a Western world problem. This is a workers, you know, they want us hunching down at each other. They want us worried about, oh, $15 an hour. That's too much. You're not worth that. Well, let me tell you something. If in Seattle they could do it and in you know New York, all these other places, some places are more than that. Uh, and they don't, they don't cover your retirement. They don't cover your 401k. They don't cover days off or any of that stuff. Just 15 measly dollars an hour when gas is going to be six to eight bucks a gallon. I mean, it's just absurd. You know, the average CEO makes 350 times what their entry level position at their company makes uh, a year. That's nine to $12,000 an hour rates in the US. And it and it's not as bad in Europe. It, it's like 80 times, but it's still pretty crazy. Now, I don't want to get all political on that aspect, but I just want you guys to think about that. Is anybody working 350 times harder than the person on the front lines of the company uh, or, or your average worker in a company? And the bonuses and things that then get taxed at a lower tax rate than you pay for any tax, you know, for anything. Like all their capital gains and things like that, you know, they have ways of getting around. Uh, for if you made uh, over $2 million a year in the US, uh, the most recent studies said that your tax bracket effectively, so the amount they actually pay after the write offs, is around 8.7%. That, that's stuck in my head. 8.7%. You know what a freelance YouTube creator pays? 29%. Plus, I have a 10% sales tax. Our gas tax is the highest in the country here. So whatever gas goes to, we have a percentage-linked uh, uh, tax also. So it's not a set like 20 cents on the gallon. It's going to go up. And that's not right in my, in my opinion. So... Um, yeah, and w exactly, Jonathan. And when a CEO gets fired, usually they get a golden parachute. They get a big old severance check or whatnot. Even when they get in trouble for, you know, the the bad touch or something absurd like that, it is, uh, it's sad. Um, so it's bigger than fish. It's about working people around the world every day trying to live their lives and 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 politicians and rich people want us to fight over who's making 14 who's making 20 who's making 30 dollars an hour who's making nine thousand dollars an hour and why can't they pay four thousand of that towards something else helpful to society um then people say okay well they would all leave well where are they gonna leave to like a third world country Europe has has that. When we were in our, our most uh, patriotic, the, the time that everyone thinks of white picket fences and, well, when white people think of that in America, honestly, in 1950s and 60s, the baby boomer era, wasn't so great for anybody else, uh, you know, of color. Maybe Asian Americans, uh, if they weren't Japanese and didn't lose all their stuff in the internment camps. But, um, you know, so... It was a good time for that, um, but 
the corporate tax rate after World War II so that we could get to the place where we were the most powerful military in the world. We had a 90% corporate tax rate. 92% was the peak. 92% effective corporate tax rate for corporate profits. Um, I'm not advocating that, but I'm just saying the good old days that we think about all throughout the 1950s, all the way up until Nixon, we had very, very high corporate tax rates. Um, so it's just something to think about. Um, and the other thing to think about is when they tell you, well, gas has gone up, uh, you know, 50%. It, it, instead of instead of $4 a gallon, now it's, uh, it's uh, $6 a gallon or it's gone up 150%, you know, or, it, you know, it's changed, whatever. It's gone up 50%. Uh, so that means the goods, as we saw in the breakdown of the graph, of that cost, only 30% should be factored in there to increasing the cost of the goods. So there could be a 30% of the increased cost because they've already got the infrastructure, just because they've got the gas and stuff. Um, going up doesn't mean that the delivery truck isn't still going to go there. So even if gas doubled, they're still making such a profit margin off of the 500 loaves of bread that it can be split up amongst 500 loaves of bread. It doesn't need to go to each loaf of bread getting that much more expensive. That's usually how companies will do it or phrase it. So I agree, Jonathan. Uh, you know, you can argue, uh, and I, I'll leave it there. But, um, yeah, it is a sweet shot. Uh, the Pandora leak that showed, or the Panama Papers, uh, that showed that the richest people in the world pay the least amount of taxes. Some are paying 3 or 4%. Uh, you know, Bank of America, um, oil companies, a lot of them paid nothing in taxes, not a single thing. They got money back or special programs for their company. And those are the companies, not the CEOs that get their income and then are only paying a 9% effective tax on that. Um, yeah. So I just want people to think about things. Uh, you don't need to be a nerd or an economist. It's not exciting. It's not sexy. Uh, yeah, everybody wants a female Scarlet Baddis. I know. Uh, you know, we probably won't be seeing pea puffers, Scarlet Baddis, things like that that are at that on the verge of people won't pay fifteen or twenty bucks for them. Usually, you know, they're they're they um, Americans and Europeans have become accustomed to paying. Two dollars to five dollars for a cherry shrimp. They're not going to pay fifteen dollars again or twelve dollars again. So shops won't order them. So that's why this is a window also to if things get really bad, um, it might be an opportunity that people pay more for uh, some of these things, these luxury goods. Now. Pets are considered luxury goods, economically speaking. Uh, they're not a necessity. Uh, you can argue that depending on who you are. But um, luxury goods, ironically, don't always just go down uh, with the with the economy in general. Um, so the, the good news is America does have a pretty strong economy. Inflation's rough. Gas is rough. But things like uh, the real estate market uh, are stronger than ever right now. Uh, the scary part is if the bottom drops out of that because of the things that they never changed. Uh, yes, if you raise the taxes on corporations or the rich, they just pass it on to the poor. I agree, RJ. That's the craziest thing. I don't care about minimum wage. I, I'm not like, oh, you can't pay someone $15 an hour. Let me just tell you this. You don't unless someone's an idiot who's your boss, you're not getting paid what you're worth. You know why? Because why would you hire someone and give them what they're worth? You're paying them, by definition in our system, less than that because you get the difference. You get to keep the difference 
of what they're worth. So if you're paying someone $15 an hour and it works out, well, that means that they were worth $20 an hour or whatever, you know? So, um, yeah. Mark says, I doubt you see many Ukrainians running around with their fish tanks under their arms right now. No, but you know what's interesting is that, um, you know, uh, Pleco Ceramics, Ukrainian channel, and a very nice guy, um, Yuri, I want to say his name is. So, oh, I was going to say, too, at our club meeting earlier tonight, or last night, uh, a trio of two female Scarlet Baddest maybes, they were, like, probably, but not not uh, verified by spawning, and a male, they went for $89, $89, or $85, uh, so some people will pay whatever it takes for certain fish. But the thing is, it's not even what the cost of fish is. It's what people at the fish store think people are willing to pay. And will they, a lot of fish stores, for instance, I don't want to get into naming who does what around here locally, but some stores don't, operate on the multiply it by three and that's the retail price from the wholesale price you know uh, other places also you know they they treat things with antibiotics and um they get rid of sickness and there's a time delay and there's all the other things they play pay their employees well and that costs more i see that um but also you want to see uh those that that study that, that just gets me the margin you know, the margin that businesses are making across the board, it's three times what they said the cost of goods and services and fuel went up. So they're just faking us out. But regardless, um, things are going to change in the, um, in the hobby. And, uh, they're going to be in flux for a while. Um, the the guy uh, Pleco Ceramics, whose channel, the Ukrainian channel, his entire warehouse has had no power for a week and was bombed by Russian grad uh, grad rockets. And he doesn't know which fish are in there, dead or alive or whatever. Even if the power was on. But it's a loss. And uh, if you want to support uh, Pleco Ceramics, which makes great like caves, Pleco Caves, custom ones for all different kinds of Plecos, um, he said that you can just go to his website and uh, and buy them. And he'll try to fulfill it whenever he can, whenever the war is over uh, or whenever he can get to Poland or somewhere, you know, where he can work on it. Um, but... In any case, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the real impact of this. We can talk about it another time. Um, and yes, RJ, the retail markup on fish can be phenomenal, but uh, unlike dry goods, fish die. Yes, definitely true. And it's not easy either. I mean, you got to take into account a lot of things like uh, where the store is located, what the real estate is, what the cost of power is. And that's the same for farms and things too. I mean, in the developing world in, in Indonesia and places like that where they have um, guppy farms or, or betta farms, for instance, outside, their costs may not go up that much. But if the guppies and the bettas being raised in Hungary and Israel and Hong Kong and Taiwan that are indoor, they have to pay for the heating, the cooling, um, the light, uh, the food, all that stuff. Then those farms, other places, they'll beat that price, but why would they beat it by any more than what they just barely have to? To, to cut off the competition. So even if 
something hasn't gone up in price it's very likely that it will as soon as someone else in that sector or in that general genre of uh, goods and services decides to up it. The, it, it, it exponentially rises. These tides are on graphs, they spike, you know, and then drop. And it's because of these things. It's because of human nature uh, and all that. So, I am getting a bit tired, but I just wanted to do this while I was researching and thinking about it and looking at the graphs and looking at the charts. And I would love to talk about this on the next live stream. Uh, I, I didn't stream because Eric Bodrock was uh, of Oddball uh, Aquatics was our all Oddball Aquatics and his wife Regina were in Seattle giving a speech at our uh, GSAS Aquarium Club. But I would love to um, talk more about what fish we think we can make the most money on uh, while the economy and the world is, is taking a bit of a, a hit on things. Uh, you know, um, I'd love to hear it. So maybe we'll talk about that for Friday's live stream as we'll talk about that uh, as well as a few other things. But Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out, for chatting, for the super chat. Really appreciated that one, uh, Jonathan. And uh, for members, I, I do really appreciate you guys being members. It's a buck ninety nine. You get access to things like these graphs, to four extra episodes a week of science related content on the channel, uh, the newest academic studies, and so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I try to answer everyone's questions still, regardless of if they're a member or not. So, um, yeah. Uh, RJ says, Eric's wife is supposed to be breeding fish for me. Good to know she's goofing off again. Yeah, she's here in Seattle. Um, they were over at Lawrence Kent's house, uh, yesterday. You know, he's my friend, a friend of mine, friend of the channel. Uh, I know you don't like to be political, but I love these ones. Well, <laughs> I do my yearly uh, economic forecast and my yearly uh, what are humans doing that's going to mess with fish in the year uh, forecast episodes. Uh, and I did those for 2022, but unforeseen things happen. And we'll talk more about it. If you know, For instance, almost all moss balls, 90% now, come out of Ukraine. And uh, first there was the zebra mussel scandal. And then there was the um, fact that now Ukraine is as Russians in it. So uh, not likely that uh, moss balls would be a good investment right now. Uh, but I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining me. And thank you guys, Replay Crew and everything. If, if this is interesting to you, if you want to alert people, I really do appreciate it when people click the, the like button. That makes a big difference in um, how far this the, my videos go. And same with sharing, if anybody does find it interesting. I know you don't want to annoy everybody uh, with sharing things all the time. But if you do know somebody who, who would find this uh, interesting or enlightening of, in some way, uh, I, I do really appreciate that. And, and for those of you subscribed thank you so much for those of you who are members thank you even more and uh we'll talk more on friday about maybe some strategies for uh opportunities during what what seems like a dark time uh, all right guys you take care take care of the people around you take care of your fish your plants uh and your equipment but of course, take care of yourselves because if you don't do that, you can't take care of anything else. And I think if half of us spent just 50% more energy on caring about the things, the people, the creatures around us, that our world would be twice as cool of a place. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Uh, have a wonderful day if your day's starting. And uh, have a wonderful day if your day's halfway through.
Uh, it's always time to have, there's always room to have a wonderful day still. I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, take care. And thanks again.